Hello, this is the September 13th Open ZFS Production Users Call, and we have Jesse, Stu, Jason, and myself, Michael. Perhaps a few more will trickle in. And to catch Jason up, I was lamenting the limited error reporting on the ZFS receive utility. Uh, basically, if I was exper experimenting with native encryption and either got no error messages or a return value of 255 or enter password that I'm pretty darn sure should have been enter new password and should have asked twice. So I'll try to document what's working and not working, but I sincerely hope the code has hooks to just get those in there. But that was a bit of a surprise. Plus I could not figure out having how to have an unencrypted data set with two child encrypted data sets and they had the encryption root property set, which I do know you really don't want to have on the top level of the pool because that will bite you. I'll make a note in here in here wide. And then uh, someone on the Fediverse pointed out ZFS for dummies, which is from 2020 and it's pretty straightforward, especially as an introduction. And it's not covered in ads. Oh, maybe there's one. Okay, there's a little a tweet feed, but oh, they're nice pitches. Yeah, exactly. No, it's 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 elegant for communicating the concepts. So it drills into creation, various listing, and some error handling. So uh, that is worth checking out. And here, how about I just do this? I'll drop I it do in the chat. I do wanna... always do recommend the Jude Lucas books. Oh, naturally. Uh, and he, to his credit, that's his first uh, shout out is to uh, FreeBSD Mastery ZFS. Oh, yeah. There we go. So, yeah. No, it, it's, I've used that software. Those pitches, See? those pitches would have been good in that 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 book series because um, that's that's the way trying to explain it. I always need a whiteboard with yes. with uh, colleagues how it all works because they just they don't understand when they drop a one terabyte SQL dump that they could just overwrite the same one with the same SQL dump and then they would not blow <laughs> the data sets to smithereens. Yep. So there's that. We discussed that and I've got it in the chat there. So also, uh, very briefly, Jesse's looking at D-RAID has some new JBOTs coming. So hopefully we'll hear some stories from that. But just a moment ago, Stu shared his code to make JSON output out of ZDB output. So the heavy lifting is all here. And uh, as you as you joined, we were talking about the, the importance of Unix tools. So it's a, it's heavily using simply mostly said I see. And uh, that's for your reading pleasure. So Jason, any topics, questions, especially uh, for the Dev Summit this next two days? Yeah, now I've just been banging away on beta one. Um, since I got back from uh, my bike ride hmm. um, to, to, to make sure uh, 14 um, looks good. I haven't, in the ZFS uh, department, uplifted the pool in a production environment. So don't do that, but it's like, you know, I've never really had an issue. Hmm. Uh, and I brought, brought that up, uh, did the EFI boot blocks, reboot, no problems at all. So that's all happening fine. Um, you know, just wish some of the packages were actually built properly um, and could do further testing um, with uh, Beehive on ZFS. Um, but at this present point in time, yeah, everything's replicating and doing as it should. Cool. And this last few hours, I've been experimenting with the new, if you look at the snapshots and release directory, there are new VM images that have ZFS under the hood, thanks to makefs dash type ZFS. So an unprivileged user can create a virtual machine image, or in fact, a hardware machine image, because they're pretty agnostic. 
And that is exciting and will be featured in my talk in the next few days. Oh, that's good because, yeah, I've, I've been banging on about trying to get ZFS native on. Uh, I've got some scripts to do for Raspberry Pi sort of to do a BSD install after you do a boot to get um, get a install ZFS image onto a Raspberry Pi. But if this is like from a factory, it would yes. certainly... Let me show you. So suddenly uh, he's done a just simply AMD 64 dash ZFS. Uh, so the, the raw that's image not, will that's work. That's not what I was thinking about. Um, oh, well. I'm after the ARM stuff. Oh, let's take a look. Part 64. Yeah. Boom. Uh, there's still the VMDKs. Well, there's a raw can't... image right there. Yeah, and I drop them the on bits. hardware disks all the time. The, doesn't have the bits to do the um, uh, to do the the startup for Raspberry Pi and that sort of stuff. Oh, startup in which regard? Like it has its own special dedicated image. Yeah. It's okay. got all the bits and pieces, they'll like the UEFI stuff that it needs. It might be in the standard um, ISOs. Yeah, three. let's take a look. Sorry to drag this into pre busy territory, but uh, it's simply RPI. Okay, so. Take some, scroll down. No, Next scroll. Comes. Here we go. I'm finding that. And it's hard to say if that would be yeah no nah, that's otherwise. just a standard that's just the standard UFS one no okay okay ignore that true but the plumbing might be in place to just script that up so that's encouraging yeah uh, uh would like to have CFS native RPI is that for Home or office? Well, Raspberry Pi is not really office, um, but a lot of it, you know, a lot of work gets done on there um, to test multi-architecture mm -hmm. because it's where you find the bugs. That's why OpenBSD has so many architectures. Sure. It's, it's like one thing over here will rattle a cage over here. So um, I try to do that in the free BSD world as well. Good. I still can't get over the initialization um, when you put um, a S SSD NVMe plugged into USB on a Raspberry Pi because I try to do a big um, ZFS and it, it uh, bounces the initialization of the SSD and then it goes offline. doesn't happen on OpenBSD, but mm. yeah, that's just trying to get ZFS working on on that. But that's that's a, that's a, a sort of a site edge case, not specifically ZFS related. I see. Other topics, ideas, questions, concerns. And I have no objection to a short meeting. No, I don't really have much, nothing to report. Um, I was testing stuff in the last two days to to raise things if I, I saw stuff blow up, but now everything seems to be well tested. Would you say you have a test suite or you ad hoc throw your no, standard load at it? As as you see with my Beehive test suites, it's it's not specifically you know, scriptable and um uh, run the same time and time again um but it's it's because it's a lot of manual running that i run into things like i've run into anaconda issues on um enterprise linux 9.2 i say mm -hmm. enterprise linux because everything's slightly varied now um and then i've raised it with chuck because it was only nvme based so um you know those those sorts of manual things that i go and sort of act like a user um sort of rattles that sort of stuff out so yeah that's my tweet, test suite it's me being being a user cool you have to wear a special hat for that jason <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I, I, I drop a few IQ points. <laughs> Dozens. All right. Stu, do you have any notion of a test suite unique to your deployments or simply throw your load at it and step back? Ours are a little more structured because um, ZFS is an enabler underneath of our stuff. So mm -hmm. once I get through with mine, then it goes into the dev QA QC environment. Um, I've generally caught everything needed beforehand. Um, but there is a task on my list of 73 active items to actually formalize that. Okay. Uh, to go and, you know, here's wow. a VM image, here's, and just go and fully script it for version testing, which hasn't been a priority yet. So, or hasn't gotten bubbled up far enough to be a priority mm -hmm. yet. You need a round to it, as they say. Exactly. Well, if you have nothing else, I'm sure something will come out of the Dev Summit this next few days here in Portugal. And I think our attendance is low because many of the regulars are on their way here, probably in the hotel already. Well, have have fun. I wish I was there. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, it's quite exciting. It's... Yeah, I wish I could get there, but um, uh, good luck. With... Has Beehive Con been on yet, Michael? Uh, no, that'll be Friday, okay. day after tomorrow. In, enjoy it. Um, yeah, I wish, wish I could be there, but I can't be... Too many of the Northern Hemisphere concert conferences. It's half a world away from me. <laughs> understood. Understood. We will hopefully have a a session like this open, perhaps the whole time. Um, Antonik will be joining my small tablet, and I will just try to get whatever participation we can. But we'll focus on testing and all those Nick issues. Anywho. Well, if you don't have anything else, I'm happy to call it and see you in a week. Excellent. <clears throat> Take care and thanks for joining. All right. Cheers, mate.